our songbook and turn to page 162. Yeah. Well, let's all stand. We'll sing out to God be the glory, great things he hath done. Amen. Yeah. Amen. are thankful for the great things you've done. Yes. And we always want to be mindful of the blessings that you've given us. And Lord, you're so good to us. We pray tonight that you would meet with us. And Lord, I pray that you would help us again, Lord, to be encouraged, be strengthened. And then, Lord, when we get to the preaching time, Lord, give us understanding of the word of God tonight. We sure do love you. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Yep. If you would, uh, turn over to page 294. You can be seated. We'll let the young people go ahead and come on down, page 294. We'll sing this song, Stepping in the Light. It's not a song we sing very often, but here's a good song with a good message. Page 294. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior. Trying to follow our Savior and King. Shaping our lives by his blessed example. Happy, how happy the songs that we bring. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Let in paths of Pressing more closely to him who is leading when we are tempted to turn from the way. Trusting the arm that is strong to defend us. Happy, how happy our praises each day. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Light step. Same. 
voice of gentle forbearance, footsteps of faithfulness, mercy, and love. Looking to Him for the grace freely promised, happy, how happy our journey above. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in how beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, upward, still upward, will follow our guide. When we shall see Him, the King, in His beauty, happy, how happy our place at his side how beautiful to walk in the steps of the savior stepping in the light stepping in the light how beautiful to walk in the steps of the savior led in paths of light Amen. all right that's a great song we should sing that one more often. I like that. But a good singing. Welcome to church tonight, and I'm glad you're able to make it. Let me give you a couple announcements, and then we'll uh, have our scripture uh, memory tonight. So we'll do that here in just a second. Uh, young people, get those scriptures in your mind, and uh, be ready to go here. I just want to mention uh, next Sunday, we look forward to Anniversary Sunday. And so uh, help get the word out. There might be some folks that would want to be back for a special Sunday here at church, and we'll, we'll obviously be putting out the announcement on our Facebook page and trying to get the word out this week uh, for, uh, for Anniversary Sunday next week. Have the carry-in dinner, uh, the afternoon service, and we'll look forward to a good day in the Lord's house. And then Mission Sunday, two weeks away, so uh, be praying about that and what the Lord uh, would speak to your heart about your involvement in our missions giving, and we look forward to a good day with the Jackson family, missionaries to India. And so uh, they've got a, a uh, opportunity to go there. Uh, India is a great uh, mission field. It's got a, uh, a harvest that, that needs uh, to, to be one to Christ. There's a lot of, of uh, religion over there that's false religion and idol-type uh, religion and worship. And so I'm looking forward to hearing from them and, and seeing their burden for India uh, on on two weeks from from today so uh, let's pray for for that Sunday and we'll look forward to that and uh, then I want to just encourage you to continue to pray for these folks on our prayer uh, list uh, here on the the bulletin and then um, pray for those that are traveling uh, those be coming back in town and here in, in the next couple days uh, folks traveling tomorrow. I know my mom and dad went out of town for the weekend and they'll be traveling different ones. So uh, pray for those type folks. And then let's pray for our country. And let's pray that the Lord would uh, show us some mercy and uh, help bring our country back to where we need to be. All right, let's have our scripture memory. If you got a verse tonight, why don't you come on up? And, uh, good, we got several of them. We'll use this microphone. Steve. All right, you're up, Dan. Proverbs seven one. My son, lay up my lay up my words and my commandments with thee. Proverbs seven one. All right, very good. Dan. First Corinthians six twenty. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God with your body and in the spirit which is God's. First Corinthians six twenty. 1 Corinthians 4.20 For the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. 1 Corinthians 4.20 right. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 Proverbs 29.25 The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Proverbs 29.25 Appreciate that. Any other verses tonight? <clears throat> All right. Very good.
good. I appreciate the scripture memory. And uh, I recall when I was younger being able to memorize scripture, and we use this as an excuse sometimes, but uh, being able to memorize it more easily, right? We say it's hard now that we're old. Um, and maybe that's true to a certain point, but still not an excuse to hide the Lord's word in our heart. I, I don't remember who it was, uh, but I saw a post on social media not too long ago of uh, this certain fella, and he was talking about his dad, and his dad was, uh, was up in years, and he had his scripture memory cards, and he carried them with him everywhere he went, and he was reviewing his scriptures every day, and and uh, he ended up passing away, and he was paying tribute to his father. And said, up until the day he died, uh, he was every day going over his scripture cards, uh, trying to keep those Bible verses fresh in his heart and mind. I said, praise the Lord for that, and that's a that's a blessing. So, uh, keep up the work, young people. That was a good job Amen. on those verses. Anybody have a quick blessing tonight? And this will just be a spur of the moment, and they put you on the spot. But anybody have a blessing that you want to share? Something that happened this week. May the Lord answered a prayer or something like that. Uh, Dylan. Oh, they got a new swing. It's called a turtle swing. And they've been wanting one of these round uh, type of swings you hang from the tree. And uh, they need something else to, uh, to get them in trouble and get hurt with back there. So yeah, that's, that's a blessing. They've been wanting one. Miss Linda. Absolutely. Amen, it sure was. Good, somebody else. Uh, Darren? Got a new pool in the backyard. They did. They got a, uh, something to keep cool and, and uh, cause my water bill to go up. Amen. Somebody else. All right, Miss Debbie? Amen. Praise the Lord for Miss Laura. Miss Felton? Absolutely. <clears throat> Amen. That's a blessing. Anybody else? I like it. <clears throat> I want to, yes. I praise the Lord. I didn't cut my hand off. Amen. Doctor came to understand <clears throat> why. I said, I still got a little finger and, and half a hand. He came to understand. I said, that's from God. Amen. <laughs> I asked him this week. I said, uh, now, brother. Uh, Brother Carroll, I said, oh, i got to ask you a question. I said, if, if Brother uh, Ron Garris was still alive, what would he said to you? <laughs> he, I said, I know what he would have said. He would have looked at you and said, boy, that was stupid. <laughs> Something like that. But yeah, that's a blessing. Though. It could have been a lot worse. <clears throat> so I am thankful for uh, the opportunity to serve the Lord. Uh, it's a blessing to be able to uh, serve him. And in my case, uh, serving with my life full time, get paid for it, that's a blessing. And I've, uh, you know, as a young man, had my, my heart surrendered to the Lord. And I always thought that I would be a preacher, didn't know to what capacity. Uh, but I knew right away when I went off for, uh, for training in, in Bible college that I wanted to do some type of work in the church full time. And I never minded working a secular job most of all my ministry, I've worked a secular job as well, a part-time job. Uh, but to get to serve the Lord is a blessing. And uh, to be honest with you, today was a little bit of a, I don't even know the right word. I want to say sentimental. I don't know if that's the correct word. Uh, but I watched the um, my church where I went for a lot of my uh, childhood, uh, Grace Baptist Church, Pastor Dice, I watched their service this morning, and I knew that it was a special day. Uh, they voted in a new pastor there at, at uh, Grace Baptist Church. This is Brother Dice's very last uh, service this morning as he is retiring uh, from pastoring. And uh, he's a young uh, retiree, 
Uh, I believe he's about 62, maybe, 61, 62. Uh, but obviously with his health, he's had so many health issues and, uh, and felt that it would be the right time and moment. And so he's been there for 30 years. Now I remember when he came. I was just 10 years old. My family and I joined the church just a few months after he came. And I look back and I think, my goodness, time just went by just like that 30 years ago. And now he's, my preacher is retired. And uh, they, they literally had a baton that they, is kind of a, uh, a commemorative baton and wrote the new pastor's name on it, Grace Baton. And uh, there during the service this morning, I watched it on the internet, uh, he handed the baton to the new pastor. And uh, a unique situation, not every church gets to do that. A lot of times the pastor steps out, the pulpit committee then uh, searches and calls, but a unique situation there where he is not planning to move away, but just retiring and uh, begin to maybe travel and, and speak for other churches and be a help in that way. But I thought, you know, it won't be long, and I'll be able to say I've been uh, in the ministry 30 years and preaching for 30 years, and the time flies. And i just a little bit thankful today uh, for an opportunity to serve the Lord and it's a blessing, amen. I hope we never get used to the fact that God desires for me to walk with him and serve him. And it's such a blessing, it really is. So um, it's, it's just been a, an interesting day with all these emotions and feelings and thoughts. Uh, but it's good, it's all good. So anybody else tonight, we'll move along. <clears throat> Miss uh, Dorothy. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Appreciate that. All right. Somebody else. <clears throat> All right. Very good. Uh, let's take our song book. We'll sing another song, and then we'll get to the message tonight. All right. Take your hymnal. Turn it over to number 180. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Yes. Boy, as listen to the testimonies, that just shows the wonderfulness of our Savior. Amen. Number one eight. Grab your Bibles and we'll get right to the preaching tonight. Turn with me to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. <clears throat> a 
I might just mention that uh, next month, and I believe this is on the church calendar and that the date hasn't changed from the original uh, date, but October the 11th through the 14th is our uh, preaching meeting. We're having a Bible conference, and uh, so just make note of that, and uh, hopefully we can have a good, uh, a good meeting. I'm, I'm excited about the, the speakers coming, and uh, we'll give more details of that, but just Mark those dates down. That's a Sunday through Wednesday, and uh, we don't have, <coughs> or we haven't had a meeting this year, uh, a week type meeting, and so this will be our first one this year. And uh, looking forward to it. Brother Watts will be with us this year again. I think it's been a couple years since he's been with us, and I uh, wanted to make the theme of the conference on the Bible, the Word of God. And of course, he has the ministry with the Bibles. But I want to have some uh, some good Bible teaching and preaching on the Word of God. You know, why uh, we believe in the Word of God, and, and a, lot of, a lot of great uh, uh, messages can be preached on that. And uh, so we're looking forward to that uh, meeting here coming up shortly. Luke chapter 12, I am excited about the message tonight. And uh, I, I really, I think I say this every Sunday night, but I enjoy uh, this series on the questions of Christ. And it's just, uh, it's just interesting when you get into studying these questions, how practical they are, and, and we look over some of the practical meanings, uh, but, but I'm looking forward to the one tonight. So let's look at Luke 12, and uh, look with me down in verse number 26, verse number 26, Luke 12, 26. The Bible says, If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least... Why take ye thought for the rest? Question that Christ asked. Why take ye thought for the rest? So the title of the message tonight is, is Why Take Ye Thought? Why Take Ye Thought? That's the question that we'll dwell on tonight. In this chapter, Luke chapter 12, and this is a, a little bit of a familiar uh, chapter, uh, the Bible talks about in verse number 22. He said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. Uh, so he talks about, be careful not to worry about the necessities of life. And we'll look through some verses here in a moment. But he talks about uh, how the, uh, the birds don't worry about what they're going to eat. God takes care of them. And, uh, and why should we then worry about the necessities of life for ourselves? He talks about um, the, the ravens in verse number 24 and the lilies in verse number 27. And I love that song, uh, Consider the Lilies. Uh, and so there's a very simple lesson here, but I think you'll find a very powerful truth that the Lord uh, gives us. So let's pray, and we'll get right into this study tonight. Father, we thank you for the Word of God in this particular passage tonight that we're drawn to. And Lord, I pray that as we study it, as we uh, read through it, that you'll just remind us of how good you are to provide us our needs and our necessities in life. And then, Lord, that we would be uh, challenged and encouraged to, uh, to not worry about these things because you will uh, take care of your children. Lord, would you help me as I preach tonight to clear my mind and be focused on the truth that we have tonight for us. In Jesus' name, amen. In order to help us in our life, because if we would be honest with ourselves, uh, most of us, we are prone to worry. We're prone to look at the negative. We're prone to say, uh, oh my goodness, how am I going to uh, pay this stack of bills at the end of the month? Uh, how am I going to provide uh, the groceries and the electric bill and all these things that we have to pay? How am I going to take care of that? And I think in order to, uh, to uh, help take care of that worry, and we go back 2,000 years ago, the people of the Lord's Day had worry in their life. Uh, now, mind you, they didn't probably worry. I know they didn't worry about how they were going to take care of that car payment. Uh, they didn't have cars back then. Uh, they didn't worry, uh, perhaps, how to pay that electric bill, did they? No, they didn't have electricity back then or pay that cell phone bill or whatever. Uh, uh, but they had their own worries. Where's my food going to come from? The supplies get low in the barn and we're in a drought perhaps or the things are happening. And uh, where are we going to get our clothing? And God was trying to help them say, listen, 
uh, in, in order for you to not worry, he said, I'm going to teach you a very simple but important lesson. He said, I want you to look out there at those birds in the field. Look out there at the ravens. He mentions the ravens in verse number 24. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. He said, matter of fact, uh, they are trusting me every single day to meet their daily needs. He, he said they, they don't even have a cupboard to store up their extra you know, food. Uh, you know, they, they don't even have a, a place to keep those things. He said, I take care of them. And then he talks about the lilies in verse 27. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And we know who Solomon was. He had everything that money could buy. He said, Solomon don't even look that good. He said, you just look at those lilies. That's an amazing thing that God has done. And he said, the birds and the flowers can teach us a powerful lesson. And so let's look at this uh, passage of Scripture. I want to give you, I think, three things tonight to think about. Let's look at uh, uh, verse number 22 again. And we're going to look at just a simple principle that the Lord uh, gives us. He says to his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. Now, verse 22, the Lord Jesus uh, draws their attention back to uh, the, the two most simple and basic needs that we have. All right, we, we have the basic need of food, and then we have the basic need of clothing uh, for ourselves. He said, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. I don't even know uh, how this came up. I guess I could play it back in my mind, but... Uh, but Darren was asking me a question this week. We we're talking about um, just uh, you know some interesting things that people have done, and 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 I guess we came across a certain individual that had went for a long period of time without eating, and they just had water, and and so he asked the question. He said, "How long do you think I could go without eating and just drinking water?" I said, "Oh, maybe about two hours," and uh, he said, "Oh, come on, I think I could go at least a couple days." And so, uh, but hey, listen, we all need food, don't we? We got to have that food uh, to to nourish our bodies. And so he he tells them, don't worry about the food. Don't worry about the clothes. He said, I'll take care of this. But here's the deal. The point of this passive scripture is, is really more important and significant than my food and my clothes. He's dealing with the issue of worry. He's trying to deal with the bigger picture here and let me give you a couple of things along this thought here of worry and the principles that we find here in this passage uh, number one or letter a don't be disturbed about the supply of life's needs don't be disturbed uh, you say what are you talking about well the word thought here he says take no thought down there in verse number 22 therefore i say unto you take no thought now what does that mean take no thought for your life does he mean don't think about it does he mean um, you know just don't even think about where you're going to get your next meal from you just enjoy life and it'll come to you Uh, what's he saying don't think about it or take no thought well here's what it means the word means or this phrase means being divided or distracted Take no thought. Uh, Don't be divided in your attention. Uh, Don't be distracted in your mind by these necessities of food and clothes. What what he's saying is this. These kind of needs should not worry us to the point of distracting us or dividing or tearing us apart. Now, most of us uh, know the feeling of looking at that stack of bills and then looking at that yet smaller stack of money, right? And we say, okay, uh, something's not matching up here. My, my bills are this high, my money's this high. And so we uh, give ourselves to try to figure out how we're going to make everything match up at the end of the month. Um, most of us 
can relate to the stress that can come from that and the strain from just the most basic demands of life. Now, in those moments, I believe the Lord is trying to teach us something. In those moments when the bills are higher uh, than the money, the Lord is teaching us that we shouldn't let that tear us apart. We shouldn't let that disturb us. Because at the end of the day, God says He will supply our needs. He's saying, don't be disturbed by that. He said, you know what, I'm going to take care of you. You love me, you put me first. Uh, he says in Matthew 6, 33, a, I think a parallel uh, passage of Scripture, he says, uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he says, And all these things shall be added unto you. Now, if we notice the context of Matthew 6, all these things is what? Same thing as Luke 12, our food and our clothing. He says, I will take care of you if you put me first. Now, we sometimes will hear that verse in Matthew 6, and say, if I put God first and seek Him first, then He's going to provide all the things that I want. And that's not necessarily true. Now, I believe the Bible says in the book of Psalm, uh, delight thyself also in the Lord, Psalm 37, 4, and He shall give thee the desires of our heart. Now, listen, God has promised us He'll meet our basic needs. If you're His child, if you're right with Him, God's going to take care of you. I mean, it's, it's the natural thing in a mother's natural love and a mother's natural uh, instinct for her children is to provide for them. It's hard, listen, it's hard to break that bond of love that a mother has for children. And, and matter of fact, to a fault sometimes of, of some mamas that say, I know my kid's not doing right, I know that, but I can't help it. I gotta, I gotta help them. They, they need money. They need food, and I'm gonna keep running to them. I probably shouldn't do that, but I, I just love them that much. And sometimes that can be a fault, right? Help me out now. We we can do that, and we cannot help out situations. And, and, and God is the same way. He has that love for His children. He says, "Listen, if you're trying to do right, if you if you love me, and oh, He didn't say you have to be perfect." We're not perfect, but if you're trying to, to live for Him, if you're trying to do right, God says, I don't want you to be distracted about how you're going to be fed and how you're going to be clothed. He says, don't be disturbed about that. And then he says in the next verse, he says, don't be deceived about the significance of life's need. Don't be deceived about the significance of life's need. Oh, yes, it's important to eat. Yes, it's important to have clothes to wear. But he's saying there's a lot more to life than that. Look at verse 23. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. I believe what he's trying to teach us here is this. A man's life is not defined by what he eats and what he wears. Think about that. A man's life is not defined by what he eats and what he wears, you can't judge the character of a person and the quality of a man's life by looking in his cabinets and by looking in his closet. I mean, you can have all the finest food money can buy, right? And you can be feasting on whatever it is you like, uh, filet mignon. Anybody really like filet mignon? I don't even know how to spell it. I don't even know if I've ever eaten it before. Uh, but uh, maybe you like the finer things in life, and maybe you like to dine on sushi. You know, just give me a cheeseburger, amen. Just give, me, uh, just give me some ribs or a good old steak and baked potato, and I'm as happy as you can be. People will have all these things and go out to the fancy restaurants, and boy, you look in their closet, and their clothes are uh, the designer type of clothing, and it's all about that label, amen. How many of you know people like that? And they got to flaunt that label, and everywhere they go, make sure people know what they're wearing. But you can't judge a person by those things. And we live in a materialistic society where wealth and success are often glorified. And I believe that Jesus is trying to make this point here. He says the life is more than meat. You know, there's more to life than the things you eat. There's more to life. The body is more than raiment. And, uh, you know, just because a man eats in the finest restaurants and wears the most expensive clothes doesn't mean that his life is good. 
And it doesn't mean that his life is more valuable than the man, may I put it this way, that eats hamburger helper and wears clothes from Walmart. There's no difference. None at all. And uh, you know what? I like hamburger helper pretty good, and I like Walmart just fine, although they take most of my money. I still, uh, uh, I'm not too good to wear those type of, of clothes. Amen. But listen, there's a principle that says life is more than that. Jesus is teaching, I think, this thought. It's possible for a man to have a full stomach and still have an empty heart. It's possible for a man to look good on the outside, but on the inside be completely naked, may I put it that way. It's possible for a, a man on the outside to have everyone fooled. And the children sing a song in choir. Uh, man sees the outside, but God sees the heart. You can put a $1,000 suit on a dead man, and guess what? He'll still be dead. Because the clothes isn't what is most important. And so we find these, these principles here of not being disturbed. Uh, let's see, not being disturbed about the supply of life's needs, and don't be deceived about the significance. Now, number two, uh, let's not look at just the principle, but let's look at the picture that the Lord gives us. Think about the picture here. As Jesus is walking uh, on the road from, uh, or, or on the, the roads around Palestine, I think Jesus saw more than just the landscape. He saw more than just the mountains. Uh, he saw more than just the meadows and the creeks and, and the animals. He saw, uh, he, he saw opportunities to teach people. Um, if you teach children, you learn to use uh, what they call object lessons. You have to have something visible that they can see that will help uh, correlate the principle you're trying to teach them uh, with a picture, and it, and it kind of makes sense. As a matter of fact, that might be a good thing for uh, some adult classes to have too because sometimes my mind is pretty weak, and I think, I just don't get it. Oh, yeah, that picture helps me. Now I get it. I think Jesus taught kind of the same way so many times. He used object lessons. He said, you know what, let me, let me show you this. And he points to the raven. He points to the lilies. So here's the picture that the Lord gives us. Twice in this uh, passive scripture, the Lord points out a spiritual picture that's to be found in the most common points of nature. He said in verse 24, consider the ravens. Verse 27, consider the lilies. Now, what's the word consider mean? Well, it means to consider, right? It means to think about something, to contemplate. It means to study or observe something in order to learn from it. I'll listen. Uh, my air conditioner in my car, you know this, I've uh, talked about it a few times. Oh, it's been just giving me a run for my money. And uh, spent some money on it. The Lord provided and, and we uh, replaced the compressor. Uh, but the air conditioner is still not working. Oh, there's something electrical uh, going on in the wiring system. And I have been just thinking about that day and night. How can I get this thing fixed? I've talked to mechanic after mechanic. And still, uh, we're kind of back to ground zero uh, with trying to figure out what's wrong with it. I think it's come down to it probably needs a new computer. We think that somehow that one part of the, the uh, well, I'm going to bore you with details. So I've been considering that thing thinking about it over and over and over. Jesus says, consider this. Study this. I want you to understand that God cares for the birds. He said, consider the ravens. For they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. How much more are you better than the fowls? What's he saying? Dawson, here's what Jesus is saying. He said, uh, I want you to look out at the birds in the field. My uh, daughter loves to get up uh, early in the morning, and usually uh, her and I are the first ones up in the morning. Everybody else sleeps in until about 10 or 11 o'clock, and they're not early risers. I'm just teasing. Uh, but, but we're up early, sometimes uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock, and, uh, and she loves to go out and sit on the front porch. So we'll go sit on the front porch, and we'll watch the birds. We'll watch the squirrels as they come out early in the morning, to eat. We'll watch the bunny rabbit. She loves doing that. God says, I want you to look at the birds. Watch them now. And he says, they don't plant a crop. He said, they don't harvest wheat. They don't harvest corn. They don't have their silos full of food. 
And yet your heavenly Father sees that they find what they need to live. How many times have we ever lived life and the cupboards were, were empty? I mean, they're empty. Now, when, when, I, when we say the cabinets are empty today, they're not empty, right? They're just not. Now, now maybe some folks live that way, and, and, and I understand that, that that's okay. Some folks live week to week, and they get enough food for that week, and that's, that's how they live. I, I don't ever recall a time in my life growing up where we didn't know where our next meal was going to come from. I'm just being honest. I don't recall that. Uh, we, were, we were poor. We had 10 uh, in our family. We had uh, eight kids and mom and dad. And so there was a lot of food consumption going on in our house. Uh, but my dad was a hard worker. And, and somehow every single week uh, we were able to, to make it by. And in those early days, uh, it, it, was, it was scraping by. But I don't know what it's like to go hungry. I don't. I've never been hungry uh, because, you know, I couldn't help it. I, I have been hungry on purpose before for different reasons, but, uh, but never been hungry. And we say, oh, man, the cabinets are getting low. But the truth is we still got probably enough food. We can make it by for another couple of weeks, couldn't we? You might have to eat some, uh, some rice or you might have to eat peanut butter sandwiches for a few days or you might have to do this or that. Uh, get out that uh, <laughs> get out that liver uh, in the deep freeze that we just put back for a day, or or get out that cow tongue or something, right? Hey, we could eat, couldn't we? Uh, we don't know what it's like usually to go without food. Jesus said, "Listen, look at that bird. He has nothing. She has nothing in her cabinets, and yet I provide for them every single day." You'll never hear a bird singing about its grocery bill. You'll never hear a bird chirping about, where am I going to find that next worm? And God says, I want you to look to the birds. And I want to encourage you that I'll take care of you. You know, if, if the Lord is big enough to feed the birds, then he's certainly able to provide our basic needs. And then he talks about the lilies. Verse number 27, he says, consider the lilies, how they grow they toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. As the Lord was probably teaching his disciples today, again, he looks over at the field and he says, you know what, object lesson, uh, look at those lilies, look at those flowers. Uh, he said, uh, they're beautiful. I've never been to this part of the world but I understand there's several different types of lilies that grew throughout the year in Palestine. They varied in color from white to gold to red. Someone has described them as being indescribably lovely. You reckon why that might be the name of the Lord Jesus? He's the what? Lily of the valley. Oh, it's a beautiful flower. Indescribably lovely. Boy, this is just, uh, just a great name for the Lord Jesus when you think about that. He's altogether lovely. And Jesus pointed to these flowers. He said, look, look over here at these plants. You see how beautiful they look? You see those beautiful petals that are on them, how colorful they all are? Jesus said this, they didn't spin that. The word spin for, for younger folks, uh, uh, that, that refers to how they make their their thread and yarn you have to spin that wool and dye it and, and get it thin enough to be able to thread a needle and, and make things he said they didn't spin that uh, he said they did not toil they didn't work to create their own clothes they didn't sew their garments he said i did that he said the heavenly father did that flowers are amazing things i don't understand much about gardening much about uh, you know uh, landscape and all that but it's amazing how I know in the winter time I can take my weed eater and I can just mow that side uh, patch down just completely down and it's just uh, some type of greenery that, that grows there Miss Felton just laughing at me she's like you don't know anything preacher I don't know anything 
But I'm amazed, and, and we've got a couple of plants in the front. I don't even know what they're called. And they'll finally die out and get all brown, and I'll just, I'll just pull it all out, just, just jerk it out. You know what happens next year? comes right back up. I don't understand that. It's amazing to me. And I think I, I've pulled it out. It, how can it come back? It's gone. But those roots, I guess, are down deep, and those bulbs, they find their way back up. You know how that happens? God does that. God does that. It's an amazing thing to think about how God can take care of the, the universe and everything just works together. I wish it would go ahead and cause the grass to quit growing. I'm tired of cutting by this time of year. I'm ready to move on to raking leaves, I guess. But God does that. And God is saying this. I'll take care of the fields and clothe them in robes more glorious than King Solomon could ever buy. And he said, if I will take care of clothing the fields with the flowers, then why do you need to worry about what you have to wear? And then thirdly and lastly tonight, we'll look at the promise that the Lord gives us. We saw the principle, we saw the picture, this object lesson. Now let's look at the promise. He says in uh, verse 24, Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And then in verse 28, If then God so clothe the grass which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast in the oven, how much more will he clothe ye, O ye of little faith? The Lord asks two rhetorical questions that points us to the promise that comes uh, if we have the right relationship with Christ. You see, when a person receives Christ, he is saved by grace. Uh, she is saved by grace. Uh, we say we're adopted into the family of God. And God then becomes my father. And with that relationship, there are certain promises. Uh, let's look, first of all, of a promise that's a good reminder. And the first one is this, that we are important to our Father. We are important to our Father. He asked the question here, uh, look again, down in verse number 24. At the end of that verse, he says, How much more are ye better than the fowls? Uh, a question that caused them to think. He said, you know what, do you think that I love the birds more than you? It's a rhetorical question. Of course he doesn't. Of course he doesn't put more value on the life of a bird than the life of his finest creation, mankind. God says, you know I love you more than the bird. You know that you're important to me. And while God does care about the birds, uh, matter of fact, to the point that he sees they're fed, he cares for us even greater than the birds. Now, we often talk about how important God is in my life. We'll say, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't live without him. I mean, that's how important God is to me. We think, you know, uh, if, if church was ever not a part of my life, I wouldn't know what to do. Uh, I mean, church is my family. Church is my home, right? God's important. He meets us there, and I don't know what I'd do without him. God's important to me. But have you ever considered your importance to God? Have you ever thought about it that way? Have you ever thought about how much you mean to Him? Have you ever thought about that? Oh, God means the world to me. I, I couldn't do without Him. Well, well how much do, do you mean to God? Let's just think about that for a moment. How much do you mean to God? Have you ever thought about that? I'll tell you the answer of how important you are to God. The cross. That's it. He said, I love you so much. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That's how important we are to him. He said, I'll give my only Son to die for you. That's pretty important. Pretty important. So the reminder, the promise that we're important to our Father, the love that he showed for us, tells us of how important we are and then he says this and here's the second promise you know if you're that important to me 
then I'm going to take care of you. We can say we are insured by our Father. We're important to our Father. We're insured by our Father. He said in verse 28, If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? O ye of little faith. The point is this, that God will care for the flowers. He said, he said I'm going to do that. This is the promise. He said, I am going to care for the field. So surely he'll care for us as well. So here's the question. Why should I worry about the necessities of life? I am thankful to be able to have relationships and friendships with missionaries. Because oftentimes they, they give me a good lesson in faith. And we'll have a missionary come through and, and share their story of how they have moved to the other side of the world. They have uh, sold all their possessions. And uh, literally, they're moving to a place they don't know anybody. And they're starting over. But they fall in love with the work of God and reaching people. And it's amazing how they just trust God to provide their needs, and He does. And it's a good lesson for me because we live in America and we live in the United States and so often we're not living by faith, we live by sight. It's just the truth. And if we can't figure it out, we're not going to sleep well at night. If I can't figure out how to pay those bills, I'm not going to sleep well at night. And I'm not saying that we can't just live life and say, oh, don't worry about that bill, God will take care of it. Yeah, you better have a lot of faith while you're sitting in the dark, too. Because uh, you got to pay your bills, you know. That's, you, you brought that on yourself, now go pay it. But you put God first. You trust Him by faith. And watch Him take care of your needs. I'm thankful for those friend, friendships with missionaries that help me to be reminded of those things. So why should I worry about the necessity of life? Why should I be anxious over the things that I must have in order to make it? Because if I belong to God, He's promised to take care of me. You are guaranteed and insured by your relationship to God. Let me give you this illustration in closing. In closing. <coughs> There's a girl, and her name is Jennifer. She's not your typical little girl. And the reason why she's not the typical little girl is because her, ha her dad's name happens to be Bill. And they share the last name of Gates. Bill Gates. See, he's the founder of Microsoft, and he's estimated to be worth around $115 billion dollars. And uh, she is not your typical little girl. Why? Because she has a daddy that's got a lot of money. Now, could you ever imagine Jennifer worrying about her lunch money? Could you ever imagine her worrying about how she would get new clothes to wear? Could you imagine that? I'd say she didn't have a care in the world. Never thought a thing about her needs being met. And the Lord reminds us that it's just as ridiculous for a Christian to worry about the necessities of life as it would be for little Jennifer to worry about how she was going to get lunch money. He owns it all, friend. We live a life of faith. God can do what he wants. He'll provide for us. And he's so good to us. So, the issue that the Lord is tackling, I believe is a bigger picture, is the sin of worry. Now, somebody once said this, and I'm just about finished. Worry is not a trivial sin. Worry is not a small sin. Because it strikes a blow at both God's love and at God's integrity. Worry declares our Heavenly Father to be untrustworthy in His Word and his promises, end of quote. That's a powerful statement, friend. When I would worry, 
It's like I look at our Heavenly Father and say, I'm not trusting in you to take care of me. That's a powerful statement. So the Lord points out the birds and the flowers to comfort us about our necessities of life. And we can trust in the provision of God. And God promises that he'll provide. So a simple story. Great truth. Again, why take he thought? What's he saying? What are you worrying for? Why are you letting this distract your mind? Why are you letting this divide your, your attention? Don't you know I'm going to take care of you? And boy, we can say tonight that God sure has taken care of us. Was it Job that said, I have been young and now I'm old, but I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Who was that? David? Job? One of those two, I think. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And so a great thought tonight on worry. Father, we thank you for this lesson. And Lord, uh, we pray that you would help us to be reminded of how good you are, how faithful you are to us. And Lord, when we get to that place where we begin to worry, Lord, would you just uh, uh, send a bird by our window to remind us you're going to take care of them. Father, would you cause us to glimpse out the window and see the flowers and say, you know what, uh, God's going to take care of me. Lord, would you help our faith to be so real that we'd be able to pass that along to those that know us, to our children and grandchildren, that they might trust in God and realize that he'll take care of them as well. Lord, we sure love you, and we pray that uh, you would help us in our church, help us in our country. And Lord, to realize, uh, Lord, we need to keep you first. Uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and Lord, that you'll uh, be with us all the way through. Lord, we pray that you're blessed now this time of prayer and invitation. In Christ's name, amen. Let's stand to our feet tonight as we close for just a moment. <clears throat> Let's spend a moment with the Lord. Let's talk to Him in prayer. Let's thank Him for His goodness. Let's ask Him to help increase our faith maybe where it's weak. So as the piano plays, let's do business with God tonight.